nucleophilic addition reactions of aldehydes and the ketones. Aldehydes and the ketones, we know they contain a carbonyl group, and the carbonyl group is polar, carbon double bond oxygen, and you know due to this uh, electronegative difference between the carbon and oxygen, electrons are more closer to the oxygen, so it has a delta negative here, and this one is delta positive. So carbon is electron deficient. And there's one more thing here in this carbonyl group. Due to resonance, you know, this electron pair can shift to the oxygen, and this, you know, canonical structure will change into the second one, and it can go back to the first one. So these are the two resonating structures. Now we can see here that this carbonyl group is polar, and because of the electron deficient center, you know, electron deficient carbon, nucleophiles can attack on this uh, negative, you know, positively charged carbon, electron deficient carbon center, so it can attack. So that's why these aldehydes and the ketones, they undergo the nucleophilic addition reactions, right? Because of the electron deficient center, nucleophiles will attack on the carbon, and after that, it is electrophile that will attack on the oxygen. So in the nucleophilic addition reaction, a nucleophile attacks on the carbon, and an electrophile attacks on the oxygen. In the carbonyl group, the nucleophile here is going to attack on the carbon, and oxygen will attack, you know, uh, electrophile will attack on the oxygen. So that means all the aldehydes and the ketones, which contain the carbonyl group, then they go to the nucleophilic addition reactions. Let's discuss the mechanism of the nucleophilic addition reactions. As we discussed that carbon is electron deficient center, so nucleophile will attack on the carbon, and this electron pair will shift to the oxygen, so you get a nucleophile attached to the carbon, and this oxygen will be negatively charged here. The carbon here is sp2 hybridized. This particular carbon here is sp2 hybridized, so this is actually a planar molecule here, right? This is a planar group here. The three groups are in plane, and once you attack a nucleophile, the hybridization will change. Here, this carbon now is tetrahedral structure, and therefore its hybridization is sp3. So hybridization changes, so the structure will change. First, it was a planar molecule, you know, a planar group. Now it is a tetrahedral intermediate. In the next step, what will happen? It is the electrophile that's going to attack on this oxygen. So this is. The step number second all right and then you will see that you have a molecule something like this here you have the four groups attached to this one you got an oxygen attached with the electrophile and you got a nucleophile here and you got the two other groups attached to the carbon so overall it is the addition of a nucleophile and the electrophile on the carbon oxygen double bond this is the most common reaction of aldehydes and the ketones all the aldehydes in the ketones, they contain a carbonyl group. Aldehyde is RCOH and the ketone is RC double bond OR. So both aldehydes and the ketones can undergo the nucleophilic addition reaction. Different aldehydes and the ketones have different reactivity. We know a carbonyl group is polar and therefore any nucleophile can attack on it. Right? A nucleophile can attack on it. But if you attach electron donating groups, to the carbonyl, uh, to the to the carbon double bond oxygen, and that you know electron donating group like R, it will increase the stability of a carbon uh, a car a carbonyl group, right? That means the reactivity will decrease. If you compare the ketones with the aldehydes, let me take here an aldehyde. We know the aldehyde is RCOH, it is RCOH, and the difference here is you have two alkyl groups. Here you have one alkyl, and this is the H. We know that alkyl group is electron donor, so R will donate electrons, this alkyl will donate here and here. And due to the donation of electrons, you know, uh, to the carbon oxygen double bond, the carbonyl group here will be stabilized, right? Because carbon is electron deficient, therefore nucleophiles attack on it, therefore nucleophile attacks on it. But however, if you attach a group that can donate electrons to the carbon, so that means it will decrease the electron, you know, deficiency of this carbon. So that means it will increase its stability. So that means aldehydes will be more active than ketones.
ketones are more stable, right, than aldehydes towards the nucleophilic addition reaction, isn't it? Ketones are more stable, that means aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. Aldehydes will be more reactive than ketones. Why? Because in aldehydes there is a one alkyl group and in ketones there are two alkyl groups. The alkyl uh, you know, groups, they donate electrons and due to the donation of electrons, you know, the cardinal group becomes stable. Its electron deficiency, you know, decreases. So its reactivity decreases. That's why in general we often say that aldehydes are more stable, more reactive than ketones towards the nucleophilic addition reaction. So that means if I take a methyl group attached to the C double, CH, uh, C double bond O and you got a hydrogen here, this molecule will be more reactive than an acetone. That means if you have three, if you have two groups here attached to this one, two methyl groups, here you only have one methyl, so this is more reactive than this one. If you attach more groups, higher alkyl groups to this cardinal group, then again it will decrease its reactivity. That means the formaldehyde will be the most reactive among the aldehydes and the ketones. Because in the formaldehyde, we don't have a methyl here, we have a hydrogen. So in general, if you attach a, a group that can donate electrons more to the carbon, that will decrease the reactivity of the cardinal group. So that means the formaldehyde should be the most reactive. Then you have an acetaldehyde, you know, like this, CH3, C double bond O, and H, because you have here a methyl, it will donate electrons, but in the formaldehyde, we don't have. These are the two aldehydes. Among, among the aldehydes, the formaldehyde is more reactive. This, is, this should be more, you know, uh, uh, stable than the formaldehyde because it has hydrogen atoms, not an electron donor group. And if you compare this, you know, uh, acetaldehyde here with the acetone, right? Acetaldehyde is more reactive than, you know, than the acetone because it has two electron donating groups. And if you replace the methyl with the ethyl, we know ethyl is, you know, more electron donor group, correct? It will donate electrons more. It has a higher inductive factor than the methyl. So if you take C2H5 here and here also the C2H5, that means this acetone is more reactive than this one because here you have two ethyl groups, correct? So overall we can say that electron donating groups decrease the reactivity of the aldehydes and the ketones towards the nucleophilic addition reactions. But what if you will attach an electron withdrawing group? And what will happen? You know, if you attach something that can withdraw electrons from the carbonyl group, that will increase the reactivity. All right? That is going to increase the reactivity of the cardinal group. So that means if you have a molecule like this, you know, suppose you got here a carbon, double bond oxygen, and you have a H. Here you attach a carbon, which is attached with electron withdrawing groups like the chlorine, right? Now chlorine is electron withdrawing group. It's going to withdraw the electrons and that will take the electrons away from the carbonyl group. What does it mean? It means that it will increase the reactivity of the carbonyl group. So that means this molecule here should be more reactive than the formaldehyde. Okay? Because you have here a electron withdrawing group. They will withdraw electrons and that will make this electron, just this carbon, more electron deficient. So the nucleophile will attack faster here, right? The nucleophile is going to attack here the faster. So that means this chloral molecule, this is called as the chloral, right? It is. It should be more reactive than even the formaldehyde. Let's take here uh, an example of the cyanohydrin formation. Cyanohydrin formation from the aldehydes and the ketones is a nucleophilic addition reaction. Here in this case, we add hydrogen cyanide to the aldehyde or ketone. So again here we know it is the H positive which is electrophile and the cyanide CN negative, the nucleophile here. And it is this cyanide that will attack on the carbon and hydrogen will go to the oxygen. So you get this molecule here, cyanohydrate. The first step here in this case is attack of a nucleophile. First the cyanide ion will attack on the 
you know the carbon and the electron pair will shift to the oxygen and then you get a molecule like this you get an R here you will have an R you got the four groups now attached to this one oxygen with negative charge you got an R dash here and you got the cyanide right you have a cyanide group here attached to the carbon and then in the next step what will happen the next step is that type of the H positive 2 on this one and then you get a cyanohydrin like this you get the OH here you got the R, R and this is the cyanide here acetone when you react with the sodium cyanide again here it is a cyanide ion C and negative and a positive C and negative that's going to attack on the carbon and this electron pair will shift like this so you get a CH3 CO negative here and then you have a cyanide ion you got a CH3 again this is what you will get and then after that when you attach a hydrogen you know H positive will be from the acid you know you acidify it and then this proton will go here and you get an OH this molecule acetone cyanohydrin all right hope you got the concept thanks for watching the video bye for now